Hello and welcome to this video where I will be talking about one of my favorite openings, the modern Benoni. I have to say that uh, I got to like and start playing the Benoni under the influence of Bobby Fischer. I remember in the 80s, I think, I was receiving these uh, Soviet then chess magazines and in one of them there was an analysis of all Fischer's games in the Benoni. I was surprised to find out that actually there were only 11 games in the Benoni played by Fischer with obviously tremendous results. And I also remember that uh, the conclusion of the article was that even though Benoni was such a successful opening for Fischer, he did not abuse it. So he did not use it at all, all the time. And this kind of stuck with me. And um, even though I, I've played the Benoni throughout all my career, first uh, by transpositions from the King's Indian, and then even directly going for the Benoni, I only played 27 games with it in my career. And the result has really been tremendous. I have won 18, drawn 6, and lost only 3. Uh, but I always made sure not to abuse the opening. I, rem I worked on it m more in more detail in 2010 when I was playing some uh, smaller uh, weekend open events in Italy and I used it to great effect to uh, create uh, imbalances and dynamism, especially against weaker opponents. So why do I like the Benoni? <clears throat> because it's a simple opening, as strange as it may sound. It is a dangerous opening, undoubtedly, but it's simple because from Black's point of view, there is basically just one plan, advance on the queen side. While doing the advance on the queen side or trying to advance on the queen side, <clears throat> Black should only need to be careful not to be blown off the board by the e5 push by white. So control of the dark squares, the long diagonal, and advance on the queen side. And that's pretty much all you need to know to play the Benoni. So uh, I want to show you one game of mine where um, white wasn't really aggressive against the opening, so that you see what can easily happen to white if they don't sense the danger in time. So this game was played in the Brato Open in 2012, in the last round, where I was playing a, a weaker opponent and um, I needed to win uh, with black in order to uh, get a decent prize. So I went for the Menoni. So d4, knight f6, c4, e6. I often played this move order because uh, I generally was never against the Nimzo Indian, knight c3, bishop b4, which offers plenty of uh, opportunities to imbalance the game without risking that much as in the Benoni. Um, and if white does not go knight c3 and goes knight f3 or g3 as in this game, I can go for the Benoni with c5, at the same time having avoided um, several sharp attempts by white after knight c3. For example, if knight, knight c3, c5, d5, ed5, cd5, d6, e4, g6, and now very unpleasant is the uh, so-called uh, Simano variation, f4, bishop g7, and this bishop b5 check. So um, I've looked at this, never felt too comfortable here, so that's why I uh, uh, generally went for the Benoni via the knight f6, e6 move order. So in this game, black white played g3, trying for some Catalan, but now c5 is very nice. Yeah. And now even the lines after knight f3, I have looked them at them very extensively. There I have found some very nice ways to imbalance the game. I have won <coughs> uh, several games here after cd4, knight d4, and now queen c7 was the line I have looked at. And now this is a good line for black because if white is not prepared uh, and plays some move like b3 or queen d3 or whatever, black gets good game immediately. And white's best here is actually to sacrifice that pawn on c4 by playing knight c3. But normally white players are not prepared for this and they chicken out and white, black get, gets a get great game immediately. But in this game, uh, white played d5 going for the Benoni, ed5, cd5, d6. Uh, b5 is also very interesting. 
I've looked at it, but in this game uh, I decided to just stick to Benoni with d6. Knight c3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight f3, castles, castles. And here for the most, in most of my games I have played the move knight a6. I found that this move is somewhat uh, um, undeservedly, I would say, neglected because it leads to very good game for, for black. And um, I also found it that uh, in the fianchetto variation, when the bishop is on g2 and not on the f1, a6 diagonal, uh, the plan with knight a6, knight c7, rook b8, and eventually a6 and b5, long term, white cannot really stop black from pushing b5, thanks to the absence of that bishop. So knight a6, knight c7 is the most direct way to play on the queen side. However, in this game, Fearing a little bit uh, some preparation, I went for the move rook e8. Uh, the nice thing is that it does not uh, uh, avoid completely the line with knight a6. So if white plays some move, black can still change his mind and go knight a6, knight c7. Because the move rook e8 is generally useful in the Benoni for black because it can semi open e file, controls it, maybe puts pressure on the pawn on e4, and it's controls the e5 square which is very important for black in the Benoni trying to prevent the breakthrough with e5 so after rook e8 white went knight d2 and now b6 this is what I prepared for this game it's aimed at exactly what white played so it turned out that my preparation was really spot on the idea of b6 is to go bishop a6 and activate the bishop on that diagonal while at the same time also preparing the b5 push and now white plays what I was actually hoping for, knight c4. It looks natural, but it just helps black, bishop a6. In the Benoni, it's very uh, considered very uh, good for, for black if he can get rid of this light squared bishop. Uh, the problem with it is that it doesn't really have a good uh, square to be developed. So getting rid of it, whether like this, or more often by going bishop g4 and taking that knight on f3, is considered uh, good for black. So queen b3, defending the knight, takes on c4, takes on c4, a6. And now b5 cannot be stopped. So see how simple and straightforward black's play is. Obviously, I'm showing this game to demonstrate what can happen to white if white is not aggressive. If white is just playing generally decent looking moves, but without any concrete aims. And in the Benoni, white's aim is actually to go in the center, a4 maybe f4, e5, and so on, to go forward and break through. So a4 by white, but this doesn't stop b5, the point being obviously that after a, b5, a, b5, there is an attack on the rook on a1 and on the queen on <coughs> c4. So white played queen d3, and now b4, simply advancing forward. White went to d1, and a5. The plan continues to be simple. Continue with c4. The knight will go to d7, b6 to support the, the c4 push. The only thing that black should be a little bit careful about is that to avoid a possible blockade on the c4 square. Knight e3, controlling the c4 square. Knight bd7, knight c4, knight b6. Simply exchanging the blockading piece. Bishop g5 h6 getting rid of the bishop bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 and now after knight b6 queen b6 it may appear that well white got rid of a lot of pieces and shouldn't be in actual danger but the opposite colored bishops work tremendously in black's favor because if you just compare them the white's bishop is doing absolutely nothing whereas the black's bishop is very active and supporting the queen side advance rook a b1 threatening b3 and this is definitely something that uh, black shouldn't allow therefore black plays b3 himself rook fc1 trying to defend on the queen side but since black is uh, is an extra pawn on the queen side this means that he, he is the uh, the side with an advantage rook a b8 e3 and now queen a7 very nice move because it just allows rook b4 and rounding up the pawn on a4. Bishop f1, rook b4, queen d1. So, 
uh, white is perhaps trying to put a bishop on b5 to kind of plug the queen side but rook e b8 now and the point of black's play is that if now bishop b5 rook 8 takes b5 a b5 and now either a4 or c4 for example let's say a4 queen d3 queen b6 and these pawns will decide again at some point a3 will happen maybe c4 will happen this pawn will be lost so just uh, this bishop is definitely not worse than any of white's rooks. So after rook e b8, white played rook c4, trying to defend the pawn on a4, but now just queen d7, and the pawn is basically lost. Queen f3, attacking the bishop, simply king g7, queen e4, rook queen a4, and in this position actually uh, white decided to resign because he has really no compensation for the pawn and even more so white's black's plan is simple just exchange and start pushing the a pawn so you see 29 moves only very simple straightforward victory by pursuing the natural plan for black in the benoni the queen side advance <clears throat> not really a typical game because white really played very passively look at all these pawns they never left uh white's part of the board but still it shows you why i like the benoni because it's simple straightforward and just by pursuing the plan single-mindedly and at the same time being a bit careful black can achieve really um, good game and excellent counterplay so that's why i like the benoni uh, i hope you like the benoni too after this game uh, maybe sprinkle a little bit of Benoni in your black games. I also hope you like my new setup. Uh, I kind of modernized the, the look, the outlook of how my videos will look like from now on. Hope you like it. And if you do, please subscribe, share it, share in, on your socials, tell your friends and well, enjoy watching my videos in the future as well. See you soon.